the first uh, question to you uh, after you have received the book is just uh, uh, what was your first impression, you know, without uh, at all still reading and, and, and kind of getting more deeper into the book, but when you just received it and had the first glance into it, what, what was your... Um, what was your thoughts? What what kind of um, what was the first things that that you really liked, and what maybe some things that you saw uh, problematic, <laughs> or and it's not not even obligatory problematic towards our project, but altogether towards these kind of books. So um, kind of so yeah, first impressions, pluses, minuses, like warm up <laughs> question. Well, immediately when I opened the parcel, or it was an envelope, I don't remember, uh, I was struck by how beautiful the book is. You know, it's, uh, I like the size, the paper, and that it's soft. Indrek was just showing the book, but I also have it on my <laughs> table, <laughs> but with the cover. <laughs> So it's it's very pleasant to hold, and uh, when you open it, the first impression is that it can really help you to plunge into this visual feast of the photographs. Uh, I think because um, you did what people now less often do, at least in Lithuania, the fashion of designing books is to leave white edges and you have filled the book you know entirely the pages entirely and um, yeah our designers seem to think that every photograph has to have uh, like it's separate uh, white space like in a gallery which is okay it's also um, an attitude towards book design uh, but uh, I must admit, I kind of miss this uh, approach which Lithuanians used in the past uh, to fill the whole page. And that's what you did. Not always. Some photographs, uh, uh, some photographs do have uh, space around them. And it's also great, you know, to, to have this variety. Uh, but yeah, the, the first impression was when I opened it, it was you know, like, wow, I can get into it. And also comparing to the impressions uh, of the exhibition. In the exhibition, you um, did this uh, design so that uh, people had to go very close to the photographs. So they were tiny and there were boxes and mirrors and something that was kind of in the way of seeing the photographs. And I understood it as a strategy uh, maybe to show how... Uh, how, the, how it is difficult to access those images in the past, uh, which also mentioned in the book and also in the exhibition that lots of things were lost and destroyed and lots of things had to be reconstructed. So uh, the viewer of the exhibition had to be invited to do that in a way. That's how I felt in, in that darkness, discovering those uh, tiny gems of photographs. And uh, the book, you know, opens it up. It's suddenly a feast of these images uh, which you can experience as if with more senses than just uh, with vision. So there are no obstacles in there. Uh, so, and yes, and the final pages, which are very conveniently in pink, I mean, the change of color is good because it's easier to find them. And uh, pink is, of course, a symbolical color on the, in this subject of women photo women's photography, uh, where you provide all the um, information, available information on the images. And it's very easy to, to find those places, uh, consult, you know, look for the information. Um, while you don't clutter with it, uh, the album, the space where all those images are presented in the best way possible. I also like uh, the quality of the printing and of the photographs. So lots of praise to you. <laughs> um, texts as well, they are very uh, concise and informative. You don't have much of analysis here. Yeah, I noticed that you emphasize the word truth 
and that we cannot present simply the truth, that everybody has to kind of construct their own truth. And as the viewer of the exhibition and also as a reader of this book, I feel that, yeah, you leave me this space to construct uh, my own narrative of this um, history of photography of two countries and um, and my understanding of its truth, truth like this. Mm. So. Yeah, the the the, vi the all the visuals and the design and the way how how the images were, uh, how the decisions were made, how to show the images and actually all the reworking, cleaning and rephotographing the images and all that was done by by designer Alexei Murashko who is originally Belarusian but living already for quite some time in Latvia and is a very celebrated designer. And, but he has a lot of other uh, um, uh, great uh, um, great books that, that, that have been both have gotten the prizes and some are just celebrated without any kind of <laughs> medals so, attached to it. <laughs> we just got lucky, lucky with our design. Yeah, but but I was very honored that he agreed because I feel that he has a designer for him, especially with these kind of more art-related projects, which he understands are not the most budget-friendly projects, um, that for him it's important that the topic uh, is interesting and, and valuable to him. So in this sense, it's even the double honor that it's not like that there is some kind of <laughs> sum that we can pay to him, but uh, and, and then he agrees, but that it's the topic or it's that the project itself speaks to him. And that's why he wants to, that's why he agreed mm -hmm. to collaborate with us. Uh, but yeah, about the text, we decided... Um, and not not to push too much to kind of keep it simple and, and informative and just to introduce um, introduce the the journey, introduce the concept, introduce the artists. But uh, hopefully, uh, this will be something for the future because there's still a lot of research that has to be done uh, where this uh, analytical part will will be much more present than it's than it's now. That's why we also. I think did not shy away from uh, writing very much from the curator's perspective instead of um, mm -hmm. hard edge researcher perspective or something like that. Being very honest uh, where we stand at the at the moment uh, with this particular project, and also we never shied away that this is actually very much an art project. Um, that it, of course it, it it is also a research project and and in a way it was a historical exhibition, but but it was more art than history exhibition and uh, because as you saw and as you yourself now tried to analyze the, um, what you saw in the exhibition and how you think you should have looked at the things and why <laughs> that it's very conceptualized and actually uh, that that. And that this topic and these authors are in a way also a catalyst to talk about um, to talk about how we perceive the history, how we perceive um, um, the artists, uh, uh, the truth, uh, the canon. I have I have never thought so much about the canon um, mm. as much as during doing this project about how wrong approach is to do some canons or something like that 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 uh, you know that 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 the history and uh, who is good and who is not good and why they what where we should write or talk about one uh, person and not about other is is very complex and not so simple that there is some kind of uh, god-given geniuses out there and the rest are kind of <laughs> not important or something like that because it's the question is what is interesting for you or what is um what for you is this great thing so uh but yeah in in the design also there is this uh moments that i like that Murashko did uh, was that he also sometimes used instead of the white background the black background especially mm -hmm. with the flower negative flower image negatives those glass negatives and uh 
and some other things to kind of enhance the the, the feeling and uh, and and in the end this index that we made where we a very uh, detailed give the information about each the image this is a uh, homage and uh, and kind of present to all the future art historians because what I have, mm -hmm. ex and it kind of even felt more than this curatorial <laughs> text for me <laughs> to have this part very well done because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the approaches and, and the information and that can change and attitudes can change and something like that. But what will stay is the material itself and and information about that material and uh, and. Uh, this is something that I don't know why, uh, except if it's really serious, big monographies or, or encyclopedies or something like that, that many times uh, this is the thing that is skipped in the books, that, that maybe it's mentioned in general that it comes from that and that and that institutions, that and that private collections, but not specific, not saying specifically where, what, how, why, you know. <laughs> And it's very hard afterwards also for me as a researcher, or if somebody also artists, they are very engaged into art projects, so uh, <laughs> into research projects, so they also would maybe, some of them would be in interested to go and, and find those uh, um, works or, or that material. So it's just, uh, it, it, it just, you know, kind of, we we give them already this these tools, this information, and uh, this access um, to to this to this material that I don't understand and have never understand why 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 it has been chosen many times not to be present in the books like these. Uh, I really liked how you presented each photographer uh, through a series, if you could. Some photographers probably didn't do any series, so they are presented as girls who photographed uh, whatever similar photographers photographed in any country. I can recognize uh, the same types, the same situations as uh, in uh, provincial photography or even um, in, in the photography in the city in Lithuania. So we could compare and find the same subjects. Uh, so those photographs uh, like uh, by Plavina or Mergupe, they don't contradict what I would expect. But um, uh, when you present the photographers through a series like rent, through towers, uh, lighthouses, towers, I find it very interesting. Um, it seems like uh, this... Um, Typological photography predates Becker's. You know, it's not like nobody did it before, and uh, that um, Rent was the first in the world. I don't want to say that, uh, but when you look at images like this, you see uh, a personality behind them. Somebody who has a special interest, he has a special attitude, and this is reflected in her photographs. And uh, you can imagine that there were lots of people with specific interests uh, which were expressed in their photographs, uh, but then Becker's only conceptualized it, turned into a school. Uh, and that school then continued, became uh, something serious, which photographers take up and uh, use it as a method. Uh, but uh, somehow, even without this conceptualization, um, the method emerges. Uh, but it's not the most important thing when I look at those towers. Uh, for me, it's the most interesting thing is this personality who travels around, this woman who looks at towers, which is uh, like typically a male subject. <laughs> if we look at gender studies, you know, it's something different. And, uh, of course, the images themselves, they show uh, a very interesting variety of the design of towers, which is interesting in a different way, again. Or, for example, uh, a completely different story, Lydia Tarim, where you present her whole photography through the images in the same mirror. 
reflections in the same mirror. It's, uh, I think, a wonderful way to present a photography, a whole life story, which is, uh, which you tell also in words, but uh, the images tell it as well. Uh, and um, what I want to say through this is uh, that I really like uh, the way that you decided to uh, show these photographers by selecting something small, probably very small from their archives. Um, while, you know, as a researcher myself, I know how difficult it is because when you get into the subject, you see lots of images which you would like to show and then it become, it turns out in the end that you create two large books and probably they don't even show those photographers. How was, how did you choose? What was the process? How did you decide to present them in such a way? I was even at some points worried that some uh, photography historians might try to approach the exhibition and, uh, and now also the book. As a, as a history book, which it is not, as you say, there is no analysis in it, and most partly also because we have not had chance to do it, but but otherwise also that the exhibition and the book now does the same. It's a very artistic approach. So when you talk about Helena Fent's lighthouses, then you know to be honest, the truth might be also that she just had uh, um, uh, to say. Uh, Let's say a very mean interpretation for the lighthouses could be easily that she had a very limited uh, uh, fantasy when it came to making postcards. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it's very mean to say, but it actually is totally possible because we. That's the another beauty. We don't know nothing about her. No, but uh, Indra, that, that you, what you have constantly said also that when looking at other of her images, she was obsessed with towers. So she yeah. liked, you know, the church tower or. There has to be always this tower, so it's going through, you know, many no, of her images. So yeah, there no, is something about those no, towers. No, but that's but what I mean. That it, it's, it's obvious that when she makes a landscape... I think there is. <laughs> yeah, no, when she makes a landscape composition, then she just needs to have the, the church or the chimney. Or you can imagine she went to Italian Old Town. Like, I mean, <laughs> only towers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and 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 yeah, and the lighthouses were a popular topic also when you live on the islands and so on. So this, but there were also other topics. She liked also finches and she liked roads and she liked uh, traces uh, and uh, I don't know. Which like, sounds all yeah, like this yeah. German conceptualist yeah, photography. Yeah, let's see, let's see. Actually, yeah, we could, we, we could have. We were even when I was presenting to Shelda first the material. Then we even had this discussion: which kind of. Uh, uh, serious should we take from her? So, so actually, I like very much your interpretation that we had a very early conceptualist among us. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, and uh, and so we had, yeah, we had freedom to put those series together. And then, for example, when we talk about Lydia Tarem, then one of the reasons why we we went, uh, like she had those selfies in the mirror. Why we went for that was also that uh, so the material wouldn't get boring, to be honest. Again, when we take it into this art exhibition context, then, you know, another five photos of studio, you know, we have Kreitzberg already, you know. Yes. Uh, and, and Lydia Tarem as well was doing actually excellent studio photos. And again, I was actually afraid of being attacked by the photography historians like that I'm sort, sort of diminishing her... Uh, you know, her creation when I just show her with some blurry selfies in a mirror. But then again, the story was so nice, so it was so uh, so, so touching that she photographs herself throughout um, uh, the, the mirrors. And, and again, a little bit similar as with Fent, there would have been actually different stories to tell. Uh, like her, her relationship to her husband would have could have been also showed totally differently. And, and that was very much, at first, I was very much torn towards showing her through the, you know, the male gaze. So the, well, sorry, female gaze then, yeah? Well, the, because there are a lot of photos <coughs> of her husband, like on the beach or whatever. We, could have also had a different, mm -hmm. uh, uh, different look uh, of her. But the, but the, the, the mirror also, of course, kind of in its own way, kind of resembled this predecessor or ancestor of selfies. So because we, we were talking a lot while making the exhibition that we want it to very much to be about the present time. So 
that it's not that it's not kind of we're not trying to kind of make this objectified ob objective kind of look into the history but that it that it strongly connects with the time in which we are living so kind of i think what at least one of the reasons why we chose those mirror images besides that it's a very personal story and it's a self-portrait and, and self-portrait actually of her family and in the end a very tragic end in a way portrait of her already as an old lady um being alone um uh, and for the first time getting back to the to, to, to the place where she was living before the Second World War uh, was that it kind of resembles also this urge to photograph yourself. But then I would say mm -hmm. Alexei Murashko put it after the book was, was out and then for me he managed to verbalize it in a very beautiful way that, uh, uh, how to say, that the book gives faces uh, to the photographers, that they became... The, the series became like portraits or they became characters which I, mm -hmm. I kind of it, it was a very beautiful way for me to say for, for him to describe what we did I was very mm -hmm. very pleased that I it's like in our days it's very popular to also make this for you know for the bigger audiences there's little fairy tales about important women in history or something like that so it's a little bit of that you know kind of except we're not writing mm -hmm. fairy tales but but but, but the, there Rapun is those little cute stories but we had Rapunzel <laughs> But we have. That's why we also played with the titles and those little descriptions about them. Uh, that, that we had the Rapun Rap Rapunzel, yeah. how it's in English, and and, and salon lady and, and and girl on the bicycle and, and kind of these kind of. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, I like that as well because these uh, small titles they also indicate the way it's possible to to think about these women because I must admit. Uh, albums of um, photography that was made before um, the middle of the 20th century, they often tend to become quite boring because uh, in albums that present not the greatest achievements of art photography, but of those, let's say, craftsmen photographers, perhaps women photographers, they tend to be the same everywhere. And we have such albums in Lithuania as well. I have participated in making one <laughs> with the same Kupiškis Museum that has uh, Šleivite, but I have also participated. So I had a lot, seen lots and lots and lots of such images. And if you just put everything, just to show examples, uh, you would have the same kind of album. So um, the way you selected those different stories, those different fairy tales, actually helps to get into the subject and what is most important to make it interesting. You know, it raises questions. You see this little story uh, with a mirror. It's like a short poem. And uh, as you have just told there is plenty or there are plenty of subjects to choose from in this uh, photographer's uh, archive uh, and you could have done that you could have shown examples of this and that and it would be in interesting as well but when you when you concentrate it like this and uh, I was thinking about uh, a word like poem you know a poem short poem about life and it becomes very very deep when you concentrate it like that and probably much more significant than it was actually for this photographer because she just kept snapping probably those images from now and then you know didn't think much about it and actually that's what happens with photography in our lives we keep snapping and then other people make something out of it when they discover the archive. It will happen also with our contemporary photographs, I think, the ones we snap for ourselves. When we talk about art, it's different because uh, photographers, when they intentionally create art, they, of course, conceptualize, they uh, they try to present it in, cert in certain ways and then it becomes like a finished statement. 
it's more difficult to open it up and uh, kind of create your own stories out of that. Uh, art can be analyzed and it's uh, another thing, another topic, but uh, the fascinating thing about photographic archives is that it leaves lots of freedom for future researchers, future uh, people who just like to look at photographs and see something. So you saw selfies in Taran's photographs, uh, and of course, everybody would see it. It's possible to see in them also uh, the link between mirrors and women, which is constantly discussed in the context of uh, gender studies, um, in the context of art, when, how men, women are represented in, uh, in traditional art. In <laughs> My cat, always the participant of most important discussions, meetings, and so on. <laughs> yes, and, um, uh, you know, tra uh, traditional paintings, but also uh, in photography, in women's photography in particular, like... Um, uh, in this canon of the history of photography, world photography, there is this lady Howarden who photographed her daughters often looking at the mirror. And these cano canonical books of uh, history of photography, they emphasize this woman in her private space looking at the mirror. And there are all these co connections with narcissism and what was uh, talked about women who are vain and so but, on, but mm -hmm. also it's a way to see yourself and so on. And of course, when we look at these uh, few selfies that you have presented, we can think of all that, but here it's another la layer of history. And uh, this history is disturbing, and of course it reflects uh, our common history of Bal Baltic states when... Uh, the old way of life was torn apart by um, uh, occupants and uh, people's lives were destroyed. And we have lots of stories about that. Uh, and this selection of yours makes it uh, memorable. I mean, it's an, one more story which will stay in my mind because I've seen it, this visual story. And it's different from other stories on the same topic in some subtle, small ways. So it's very nice, I think. And talking about history, uh, for example, when I looked about Kreitzberger's images, of course, she was, uh, I can see, she was a, an important photographer, had her studio. You also informed the reader about this, but of course, uh, all her photographs are really well done, retouched and, you know, it, as an art historian, I would almost find nothing to say about them because they're all so typical <laughs> of that time, but very good examples. And I remember Baul, uh, who was photographing both in Latvia and in Lithuania, and also he influenced lots of people in Lithuania as well. So I don't know who was first, Kreitzberger or Baul, but it doesn't really matter because it was the time. But what struck me in this, when I was uh, looking through images and looking at the end in the catalog, uh, that um, you say, and it's, it, it should ob obviously be the truth, that lots of celebrities of the time came to her studio to get photographed. Uh, but when you look in those uh, pink pages, at least I have found mostly mentions of woman or man. So the names are lost. And those celebrities, they cannot be identified or something or, or what happened. It's also about our history because lots of memory is lost, isn't it? So, yeah, uh, the case. Uh, I think that they definitely can be identified. They just have not been identified identified yet and so in the museums they just are with these titles but there was a lot of material a lot of photographies from her where the names and surnames were present of uh, 
well-known that time writers, uh, film directors, uh, actresses and actors, opera singers, uh, uh, dancers, and etc. They just weren't as exciting images. <laughs> you know, most of her things are uh, preserved in the postcards because those celebrity images, they were mass-produced and, and she actually uh, made... Uh, produced them in such a way so she could uh, sell them more for cheaper price. Uh, so she, in this sense, was a true businesswoman. She was thinking kind of how, how to get some more money by making them ch uh, cheaper and then people would more buy them. And I guess thanks to that, she actually has saved <laughs> partly her legacy. Uh, but yeah, yeah it, it's, a, it's a very good point from you <laughs> about that. Yeah, that we are bragging about <laughs> all those celebrities, but then choose the works that <laughs> don't show them. And so I actually did not thought about that. Uh, let's let's call it then like that. That there is all those also preserved images, uh, photos made by her of those local celebrities. But these are kind of you know like from the this platonic kind of view. These are those. Um, Pure art, isn't it? <laughs> it, it? It's this, it's this uh, prevision. No, how how it's in English for this platons, this first, uh, you know, oh, oh, before the know. before the, you know this the first image. Plato, like yeah, primal, yeah. primal image. Yeah, yeah, primal. yeah, yeah, primary yeah, image. ideas. <laughs> <laughs> so let's call it the primary. <laughs> <laughs> well, and art for art's sake, then, because yeah. in photography, is, it's important, you know, who is in the image, yeah. usually. And, uh, again, we look at the tradition of uh, writing the history of world photography. Uh, they would always uh, talk about this and that photographer who photographed famous people, and of course their portraits will be included in, uh, in, in the book, like Julia Margaret Cameron photographed Herschel, and of course Herschel is in the history of photography books. And Kreitzberger seems to be, you know, like, like one of those master photographers, a great portrait photographer, and uh, probably history of photography books should include portraits of famous people made by her. But you have chosen now, as I understand, uh, to include this art for art's sake. On the other end of the spectrum seems to me Hilia Reed with her flowers. She's also a professional, as I understand, but she was making uh, postcards so it is a kind of thing not created as art, at least in that context, but um, uh, simply for commercial reasons. And uh, I really like that you have included those, you know, silly pictures of flowers. Women are associated with flowers. It's something... Uh, uh, to, to, yeah, I'm not confusing the names. Yeah, it's Reed, isn't it? Yeah, it's Hilary. Yeah, but in her, I don't know, not defense, but uh, but I have to say that she also participated with the flower with the compositions in uh, exhibitions. Oh, did she? Yeah, okay, they, they, so there is even mm. some exhibition prints preserved and so on. Yeah. It, she actually yes. yeah, took them seriously. I see. Uh, so Schlevita, whom you mentioned in your introduction and whose book we have published. She also photographed lots of flowers and participated with the, in exhibitions with them. So I can see a kind of parallel. But uh, when you present those postcard flowers exclusively, it's just somehow very nice. I don't know. I really like that part. I don't know what to say about it. It's just beautiful. And on the other hand, you can see how uh, a book like this, which treats all kinds of photography like on equal terms, it doesn't matter if it's a documentary on gold washing or art like Kreitzberger's or flowers, postcards, when you put them in this book format and print them in this uh, equally quali high quality way, they suddenly became, become very artistic and somehow you feel that you can start appreciating them 
uh, of course, as an art historian, you would start talking about the inclusion of uh, all kinds of visual material in the history of photography and blah, blah, blah. But, uh, but somehow it talks to me about this equality of all kinds of images uh, and a book, this format, such a format of a book, can help to see value in each kinds of photography. So I find it very interesting uh, and also very valuable experience as but well. In this context of equality, uh, I have a question to you. Um, in, because obviously this uh, project uh, starting point and also the way how it was presented, it wasn't shying away from introducing also and dealing with the woman history. Uh, and and it's it in, in itself it's nothing new, not also very old. It, the concept came uh, up in this uh, or was invented in the uh, and developed in the seventies in America, and uh, and and now it kind of seems to have again a momentum at the moment. You know, it 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 developed through the seventies, eighties, nineties, and early two thousands, but it seems that now it kind of maybe because of political events um, and shifts and, and earthquakes <laughs> happening around the world, uh, it, it has uh, helped it to um, yeah, have a momentum at the moment. And while I was working on this project and the uh, uh, Riga project, yeah. I experienced uh, interesting, totally different kind of reactions to these kind of projects. Uh, uh, I had those who were, you know, congratulating me and are also congratulating now and that it's very important. It's great that we took it up and, 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 and we have to talk about these things. And, and, and then there were those who were neglecting um, the project because it is from this perspective that it is through this woman history perspective and and diminishing it to being a fashionable at the moment <laughs> mm -hmm. as as to kind of um, pushing down you know or or kind of diminishing the value that that that, that we are doing it for the wrong reasons or or that uh, that this may be also suggesting that this is not a, a obligatory a right way how to look at the history or that it's too ma manipulative. I don't know. It, d different views have different... Uh, and then, of course, there is also uh, kind of the third who are... Um, who are have very strong... Uh, um, idea about that it how much and how strongly it all has to be pushed that are, again, critical towards us to being too mild. <laughs> <laughs> that we should have pushed Too it. mild. Yeah, that we should ah. have pushed it more. So those who, you know, who, who want it to be even more feministic, that it would be more um, more spoken out than we did, you know. Um, so what is all your thoughts, you know, also just in general, but also in the context of photography of this uh, woman history momentum we have at the moment? Yes, I feel that uh, this momentum is going on and I'm also involved in it as well because <laughs> we uh, not, not mentioning the book about Schlegite, which started, you know, years ago, we started being interested in her work and it's kind of the end of this um, project, but also not the end. We are thinking about an exhibition in the future. Um, but also we are writing with, with my colleagues a book, a dictionary-like book of women artists of Lithuania. So this is going on. And uh, yeah, a few years ago, there was um, an international conference organized by um, people from British universities, actually from London, but in Vilnius to kind of enhance this question of uh, women photographers. It was called Fast Forward, Lithuanian edition, and it's uh, focusing on women photographers and lots of people from all over the world came and they organized this conference in Lithuania in order to encourage uh, this uh, 
talk and research into women photographers in the Baltic states specifically. Uh, we had a hard time finding people from Latvia and Estonia to invite, but we found them. And uh, so this uh, conference was complete. But somehow I think this conference also encouraged uh, interest in, in women's photography um, or was part of the momentum, I don't know. But um, yeah, I could say that uh, starting from, let's say, middle of last decade, and in now, this topic is is kind of hot. And if you are not fast enough, other people will do it. I feel that I feel this, especially with this uh, women artists book. We are pressed to do it quicker because because others will do it. It's uh, you know trending now. Um, and you mentioned certain political events, and uh, maybe this is connected. I don't know, maybe not. But yes, yeah, somebody has mentioned in the wide world that um, Trump's misogynism has created the Me Too movement. So it's possible that all kinds of backlashes in our politics have also had this um, opposite effect of, uh, you know, you should look for women photographers, you should rewrite histories, and so on. Uh, like in Lithuania, just before the current elections, which were criticized by two Estonian ministers, but in a very, very funny way, <laughs> you must see our com what our comics have done with this. <laughs> But uh, yes, uh, before these elections, we had a government which uh, for some time didn't have any women uh, in the highest positions. And afterwards, they included one woman just, you know, for, to calm things down. But uh, uh, we did feel in Lithuania that uh, we have this kind of going back to this patriarchalism. And you, when you see the situation, you start thinking, and probably because of that, the, the push became stronger towards uh, introducing uh, the tenets of feminism into life, and also, of course, in art. And of course, it's um, the question of art history. Uh, you mentioned before, and you expressed it now, that there is this canon of art history. And it's difficult to avoid the canon uh, because, of course, you, we are talking there about the best artists. You know, they are the best. How can you start talking about some marginal women artists before talking about the best artists? When you teach art history, for example, or when you write art history books, or when you create an exhibition uh, this permanent exposition of uh, the history of local art in national gallery uh, without mostly showing, first showing those famous, most important canonical artists who are usually men uh, and showing women instead. We had this problem in Lithuania as curators, uh, Laima Krivite, Lolita Jablonskine, Yolanta Mertsushuskite, Jurashene and me, we were doing this permanent exhibition and we had a great problem with that and we ended up with much fewer women artists than we would have wanted to. And I always had this feeling that this canon of art history is conspiring against such efforts. So what I'm leading to is... Um, However, we criticize these uh, women-only books, women-only exhibitions, that, uh, and especially women artists like to criticize that because uh, they want to be among the greatest artists, not known as women artists simply. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's everywhere like that, and it's completely understandable. Every artist wants to be... Uh, known for the quality of their work and not for their gender. It would, uh, and actually the fact that we still need to stress that shows that there is this disbalance in, in gender relationships. And um, so 
Also, women artists criticize such exhibitions like Silver Girls, such books like Silver Girls, and other exhibitions and books, but they normally don't refuse to participate in them <laughs> because it's a showcase. Uh, it's a showcase for these women artists. And uh, I think we need to do that because otherwise, uh, that's the reason I was telling about my experience, the canon conspires against uh, showing those women because they are not so famous. And why are they not so famous? Because before historians were not talking about them, before they were not finding their work interesting, they were not finding their work, they were forgetting their work, and they were probably marginal in those um, societies and organizations uh, which were important for, uh, for art. Uh, and in Lithuania, even was it was the case uh, in interwar period that uh, women were not accepted into the artists' uh, society, so they created their own organization. It was not the case in photography, uh, probably because there were so few women photographers, uh, nobody saw a threat in them. Somehow they participated in the same events. Uh, like I find you mentioned in this book as well, that it was the case in Latvia and Estonia. Uh, but in, in uh, this fine art sphere, which was, of course, much more important, women were excluded. And we could find lots of situations like that. Uh, we could analyze like those good old art historians like, uh, like Linda Nocklin and find facts, you know, how women were discriminated in this way or other way, uh, lots of cases. So, of course, uh, knowing um, such situations actually makes it even more amazing that uh, some women artists and photographers did manage to have such pos positions like Kreitzberger, for example. You know, you start admiring them for their strength or Anna Cook, who photographed those uh, gold washing uh, processes, documented and even probably wanted to create a book. You know, you see them as heroes who went against the grain and uh, managed to do things which were uh, like, uh, well, not forbidden to them, but where they were seen as uh, somebody who is um, who shouldn't be here, <laughs> simply. You know, we were always told you must be twice as good as the men who are in those positions in order to take the same position. I was raised with this idea. I know it is true in, from life experience. So, of course, these women in older times, they had even more obstacles to achieve mm -hmm. uh, what they wanted to achieve. And it's admirable. And concerning the other um, objection that you didn't go more into uh, this feminist approach, I reject that. <laughs> uh, to me, uh, such feminist approaches in this day, I'm not talking about the 70s, then they needed to formulate uh, the approach itself. Uh, the uh, methods, how to analyze this, how to raise those uh, women artists, how to question the canon, how to question the traditional ways of representation. They had to devise uh, those methods, use them, and discover all these forgotten uh, and lost women artists. We talk just about art. Um, and nowadays, it would be just the repetition of the same. And uh, whenever people start doing it uh, very thoroughly, like following the method, I, I notice that I'm getting bored because I know the story already and I want different stories simply. So what you have done, you have uh, brought these um, women photographers out and you have presented them as unique personalities, unique artists, and, uh, you know, interesting people. Uh, and um, I think this is very valuable and maybe much more val valuable than if you just showed whether they 
some, whether somebody was a little bit feminist or not, and uh, how they participated in women's movement, movement or not. Of course, uh, such an approach is possible, and uh, it would be probably also interesting in terms of history, but uh, in terms of photography, I find this version also very interesting, the way you showed it, and I don't see why it should be otherwise. I also think uh, that your uh, decision to include those three contemporary artists uh, is a kind of very nice hidden way to say something to viewers and to readers about um, the way that this uh, photographic archive by women, what, you know, what, what's its situation. I didn't realize it that much when I was at the exhibition because we were busy with the symposium and, you know, my thoughts were elsewhere. <laughs> but a book allows you to, you know, read, look at it and act peaceful way, analyze, and uh, I have, well, I have to consult my notes, <laughs> but uh, I have written down what's most important about each of the artists, and now I see that, okay, when you show ton art, you show what is lost, and of course, it's like a way to say that lots of things that are in this book, um, they are just the peak of an iceberg of mm. what is lost. Yeah. And uh, also that lots of women photographers who are not in this book might be lost. And then when you show the Bois Boule, you, you, uh, the main idea seems to be, uh, you know, what makes things visible. And, uh, you know, we have to think a lot about what makes certain photographers visible. Um, their fame when they worked in their studios or what historians wrote about them or whether they participated in the exhibitions or if they published a book or if people talked about them simply in the media, what makes them visible? And uh, actually, since you don't analyze this in this book, uh, it's uh, it, it, uh, like an, a question to the reader. You leave it open also to think what made these women visible or invisible in this history and what makes them visible now when you have had this project. Uh, so it's something to think about. And of course, uh, Sam Van Ingen was about uh, the only man in the exhibition, <laughs> as you mentioned it. Uh, he talks about reconstructing and manipulating those um, found fragments of history, of uh, uh, this archive, which, which has lots of gaps where lots of things have been lost, of how present historians and creators can recreate, uh, not, not only by reconstructing this archive, but like creating new stories out of it and making them relevant to contemporary viewers. And I find that you have done it with this book. You made them relevant. Mm. 